This video is brought to you by IamTheKiller.net. It's been a while since my last actual review, and so I figured today I would give you a review of the Elgato Turbo 264. If you haven't heard of it, it is a hardware based H.264 encoder. It's USB. I've had it for just under a year now. I figure this would be the perfect time to review it. So, what you get in the box slides out like this. And there it is. As I struggle with the box one handed, it looks like a standard USB jump drive. There's hardly anything to it. USB. It's got, I don't know if you, yeah, you can see it, it's got holes in it for ventilation, but I have yet to even see why it would need that because it doesn't appear to get hot. It's almost like an inanimate object. It's almost a joke. It's like there's nothing inside of here. It's like the USB ports go to nothing, but it does in fact work. So let's continue on to the review. So you open this up, you get the, uh, Turbo Quick Start Guide, which basically says plug it in and put the CD in. So that's all you get with this. Let's put that back. So let's give it a go. Okay, now because I've owned this for a while, I've got the software installed already. So let's open up the software. So here is. Elgato's Turbo 264 application. So I'm going to, right now you can see it says Turbo off. I'm going to plug it in. Turbo switches on. It's it's recognized as a vendor specific device. So that means it doesn't exactly say, hey, I'm a Turbo 264 for now, as of yet. So going into this, can add some files so what I'm going to do is I have oops there we go I have some DVD backups that I've made I've been making throughout the weekend here so let's see what DVD do I want to convert uh, let's see office space I've wanted to do that so I'm going to take office space drag the video dot video underscore ts file into here and it's got two of them now one of these is like a commercial promo I don't want that and the other one is the full video so if I click on the info button I can set the audio it's set to English Dolby 5.1 which whatever that works for me okay and I've got it set on iPod High. iPod High is 640 by 480 H.264. It's a perfect format. It, that's what I do all my, well, most of my YouTube videos in, and that gets the uh, high quality option. You get iPod Standard, which really sucks. PSP, Apple TV, iPhone, and YouTube. Now, YouTube sucks. I, I don't know what what they were thinking but it just it's awful I don't know why I don't know why it's awful but it is now you can go through here and customize all these settings and whatnot one of the biggest complaints is this does not do HD video it only does 640 480 on up to the Apple TV which the Apple TV size yeah, I'm not sure what the size is. Let me see here. It might say... Yeah, I'm not even sure. But it does up to the Apple TV size, but keep in mind that is not high def. So, we got office space here. I'm just going to click start. It goes from there to Turbo 264, so it does have something going on in the be behind the scenes. And then what you're left here is you get to see a visual representation of what frames it's working on. 
Now, the last time I checked, my MacBook cannot handle converting a two six converting a movie into H.264 while surfing the internet or anything like that. It just doesn't do it because it maxes out my CPU. Now, right now my fans are uh, let's see if this is out of focus. My fans are going at 3800 RPM, 66 Celsius, which is pretty cool for for what it's doing, although it did just start. And then if you look down here in the corner, let me see if I can bring this up better. There we go. That 48%, these are my highest processes, processes, I guess. And you can see converting this video is only using 50, 51% of my CPU power. That's great because that gives me another half of it's only using like say one of my cores that gives me another core to surf the internet chat with my friends do just about anything which is pretty amazing so it's going at almost full speed 23 24 frames per second so that means a standard that means one that's a one-to-one -one ratio if you put in an hour of video it's going to spit out your H.264 converted video in an hour, which is pretty pretty damn good. And the quality is great once it spits it out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video now and then come back after it's finished converting to show you the, the completed video compared to what the video looks like in a raw DVD data stream. Okay, I'm back, and I've got 30 seconds to go. Overall, this recording, well, this uh, conversion has taken pretty much one-to-one. -one. It's taken about an hour and 30 minutes because that's how long the video is. I've been surfing the Internet the whole time. No problems, no slowdowns. So we got six seconds to go. Sometimes this isn't always right. It does a pretty good job of estimating, but... And there it goes. Okay, so now we can close this. I'm going to open up the movie. Just a second here. Okay, so here we go. So, here we have the movie. I'm going to pause that. And I'm going to go up to the 37 second mark. Thirty-seven oh one. All right, now what I'm going to do is going to I'm going to get the DVD version. of this up. Uh, let's see. Figure out which one's the biggest. Okay, 104. Maybe not. Let's try that again. Open disk. DVDs. Oops. DVDs. Alpha space. Open. Bear with me here. Let's get to the 37 second mark. Alright, I'm going to take a screenshot of that. All right, 
right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that video I had open before my converted one and go to the same part Okay, so here we have the DVD version. Not exactly on the same part, but you get the point. Pretty much the same exact quality as a full DVD rip. Keep in mind the DVD rip I actually shrunk down to 4 gigs so it would fit on a standard DVD. Not bad. And this video weighs in at one gig, so an hour and a half, one gigabyte. I paid somewhere around $80 just under a year ago for this stick. You can get it now on OWC for 60 bucks. That's uh, it's a refurb, but you know, what could they possibly refurbish? You know, how bad is it? Chances are it's probably just a return. So yeah, the Turbo H.264. Highly recommended if you do a lot of video like me. Great, great little device. So that's my review. Hope you enjoyed it.